Uh, take your seats. Miss Whitby, I see it's 7 o'clock. Would you please call the roll? Gibson? Present. Yielding? Here. Dobbins? Here. Thomas? <laughs> Barry? Present. Bestel? Present. Pipe? Present. And Witcher? Present. A quorum is present. Thank you, uh, Miss Whitby. Can I ask that we stand for the prayer to be led by Alderman uh, Barry, followed by the pledge of Alderman Vestal, or vice versa? Mr. Vestal, you're going to pray? <laughs> Get it right first. I had it right the first time. I'm sorry. All right, Alderman Barry, can, can we bow our heads? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us be here again today and help us as we go about the city's business and honor and praise you in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So uh, motion made and seconded by Alderman Gibson, the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Any discussion on the motion? Gibson? Yes. Yielding? Yes. Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Perry? Yes. Bestel? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Uh, and now we have communications. Do I have a uh, blanket motion? Move we accept for file one through eight. Uh, I'd like to put call number okay, six and seven. Let me get a second. One through eight. Is there a second? Second. All right. Now, which one? Six and seven. Six and seven. Uh, we'll pull six and seven. Any other on the motion? Uh, essentially, of one through six. And Miss Whitby. Gibson. Yes. Yielding. Well, hold on. I'm sorry. Uh, number one. Number one, two. Uh, one, six, and seven. So the motion then is uh, to file two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, and six. Two, three, two, three, four, five, and eight. Eight. Yes, sir. Hold it. Okay. I want to pull eight. Two, three, four, and five. And I have a, and I have a question about three. Just a question, not necessarily. One. Well, you can ask that when we talk about it. Okay. Did you call it. Did you pull? On the motion. Two, three, four, five. Gibson. Yes. Yielding. Yes. Dobbins. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Vestal. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. All right. Uh, read number one by title. Number one is a petition for a stoplight at Pike Avenue and Doyle Venable Boulevard filed by Carla Baggett with 241 signatures. Move accept and file. Second. Uh, before we do it, uh, uh, in fact, we had a discussion staff meeting this morning. Uh, uh, we did gain approval from the highway department. Uh, Mr. Marvin tells me that we need to get the approval uh, of the actual design of that. I instructed them uh, to go forward with that, uh, and uh, and then once the highway department approves uh, our design, then we can order equipment. Uh, uh, and I told uh, Mr. Russ, asked Mr. Susky this morning to prepare legislation uh, for the next council meeting, uh, roughly. Forty to fifty thousand dollars, I believe, is what he told me that it would take to acquire that. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, necessary uh, equipment to uh, uh, to signalize that intersection, uh, uh, and and yet by the time and by the time we have this done, because of their work schedule, we're still looking at the latter part of the year. It cost us roughly roughly double that if we did it ourselves. And I think the people in uh, in in Levy. Uh, understand that, and uh, and and I think they seem to me because I told them that that was a good likelihood that, of the way we would be proceeding. Uh, that they felt uh, that, and I don't want to speak for them, but felt that that was probably a reasonable approach. I think you're looking at least half of that time for us to get the approval and do the you know, the engineering work and the design work. So uh, we're moving forward on that, and uh, and. And I hope to have that done by the end of the year, subject, obviously, to the council's approval of that uh, uh, financial commitment at the next meeting, which Mr. Susky is preparing. With that, if there's, any, if there's any other discussion, if not, on the motion. Gibson? Yes. Gilding? Yes. Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Bestel? Yes. Pike? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Number six by title or in its entirety? Uh, let's just uh, do a... Uh, 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 just read, uh, if you want to summarize it. Summarize number, what, we're talking about number six? Right. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you can summarize it or not. But is it a letter four or against it's a it? Well, it's, it's just a letter of, uh, of uh, basically uh, their opinion on the uh, apartment uh, 
up on uh, McCain, uh, the issue, that issue, just their what's in their opinion of that. Uh, right. I think, I, and I and I, the person that uh, submitted these, I told that I would have uh, have these read at the council meeting <coughs> tonight. So. It's your choice. Go ahead. That's what be wants it read. Uh, this is a letter dated February 25, 2002, to the North Little Rock City Council. Dear Mayor Hayes and City Council, it is my understanding that two more apartment complexes very near Camp Robinson Road have been declared subsidized housing. I am quite upset about this latest happening. I also understand that two others were scheduled to become subsidized, but you all stepped in and stopped it. Thank you for doing that. Apparently, the Levy Amboy area has been declared expendable. Subsidized housing continues to be added to this part of town. This makes me extremely uncomfortable. There are some subsidized apartments very near my house because of some recent action or inaction. As a child, I lived in Silver City Courts. We lived there until my dad could build us a house. In Silver City, we slept with the screens hooked at night. Many of us can remember when being in a poor area of town didn't mean the crime rate and fear factor would go up. That is no longer true. Instead of going to the businesses in my end of town, I normally go to Lakewood or Sherwood now. Those of us who are driving across town to shop also vote. I know many uh, very poor people are good, honest people, but I've lived one lifetime in central Arkansas, and I've seen many parts of town go from clean, decent neighborhoods to a place where police officers go in groups. I've spent 30 years paying on a house in Amboy, and it really scares me to see the direction this seems to be going. We are still trying to create the great society when we have decades of proof that it doesn't work. Each time the subsidized housing has been added in this area of town, I didn't know it was happening until it was too late to protest. How can we know about things like this before they are done deals? I'm not certain who has the initial say in whether or not something should be subsidized. The interest which is being protected seems to be some interest other than that of the citizens of these communities. I'm a member of the church immediately below this group of apartments. If we are going to make these apartments into another Silver City Courts, we may not need the building program we have started. How many Silver City Courts do we need in our city? Please veto additional subsidized housing in this area. Sincerely, Robbie J. Shelton of Coors Drive. Second. On the motion. Gibson? Yes. Yielding? Yes. Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Vestal? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Number seven. Do you want it read in its entirety or? I think that's his, his intent. Okay. Please. Uh, this is a letter dated February 25, 2002, to Mayor Hayes and the City Council. Gentlemen, I am extremely concerned about the plan to put approximately 450 units of subsidized housing in my neighborhood. I have shopped at the Camp Robinson Kroger since it was built and at the numerous Walmarts in the Levy area. I no longer shop either place at night. I fear that shortly I will not be comfortable shopping there in the daytime. As a young college student, I lived in Highland Park in Little Rock. I often went to visit other friends there at night and was quite safe. We walked to Ray Winder Field for night ball games. Times have obviously changed and not for the better. The pat explanations of why this concentration of subsidized apartments won't be a problem just won't sell to me at 60 years of age. I'm rather shocked that the mayor and city council were either unaware or unconcerned about these plans and their impact on this area of the city. I'm aware that Pulaski County Quorum Court was heavily involved with this. I will express my feelings when I go to the ballot box, and yes, I always vote. I have no doubt that lots of money is involved and generous profits will be made. Perhaps this is the bottom line of how and why this has happened. Many people live, work, and shop in the Levy area and would like to continue to do so. I hope we can count on you to make this possible. Sincerely, Margaret Breedlow of Perrin Road. Move, accept, and file. Second. On the motion. Gibson? Yes. Yielding? Yes. Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Vestal? Yes. Fight? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Number eight. Do you want it by, by title or anything? Just by title, and I have a <clears throat> yeah, will make a comment. Okay. This is a letter dated February 22, 2002, from Jim Harvey, Chief Executive Officer of Central Arkansas Water. It's to Mayor Hayes, and it's regarding billing changes for Central Arkansas Water customers north of the river. Okay. Uh, Mayor, move, I just have a move, accept, and file. Yeah, yeah move, accept, and file. Second. All right. I, I just had a question. That, so, I mean, I read the, the communication. Uh, does this mean that we'll s still continue to set to accept payments at City Services Building? Right. People can still go there and pay their water bills. Right. Okay. But does this mean that when people need to go there to uh, for a new service or to get their service cut back on and things like that, they can't do it there and they're going to have to go over to Little Rock? Not that's not that's not my understanding. Uh, 
Uh, you want to come to the microphone? Uh, they will have a booth with a phone, and they'll have to use the phone to call Central Arkansas Water to set up their new service. Okay, there won't be anybody there to, for them to talk to physically? No customer service. No customer service. Okay, all they can do is pay their bill, and when they do that, instead of making their check out to North Little Rock Utilities Accounting or City North Little Rock, they'll have to write two checks, one for the water department and one to pay their electric bill if they're doing that at the same time. Is that true? No, they can write one check to the okay. City North Little Rock. Okay. Okay. Well, that's not what it says here, but... But I, I hope they can. I mean, I think that would be comment. Just a second. Yeah. Okay, this is they're making them write two separate checks. Okay. I, okay. I mean, I just, I, and I guess we had meetings with Mr. Harvey and. We continue to have meetings with Mr. Harvey, uh, and so if, if there's some concerns, obviously this is the place, uh, either this yeah. or my office at the time, and place to express them. Well, I mean, I, I just think uh, for customer service... Reagan, you want to come to the microphone, too? We, we get a powwow going up there. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, this might sound minor, but really it's not. I mean, when people that have to come down there to pay their water bill, you know, on time before it gets cut off or whatever, and some people have to do that, you know, say, well, you have to write two checks and everything, and some people send people down there with one check, and and uh, why couldn't we, is there not an accounting, is there not some way we could accept a check and then give them their money? I mean, just to help our citizens? I mean, I just, or did they not, or did Central Arkansas Water not want to do that? Or do we not want to do that? We would have to set up a separate account to handle those funds. The way that we're, the way we're going to be accepting Central Arkansas Water payments is through American payment system <clears throat> and what we'll do is they'll come in and it'll be a separate transaction we just make up that deposit and send it to the bank and the money gets credited to Central Arkansas Water's account. Is that going to cost the customer money to do that? No. It won't cost them any money. They'll just be paying what their bill is. Right. Okay. That's all the questions I have. All right. Uh, Alderman Gibson and Alderman Tyler. Well, I was aware of it but for the last the last month, at least, when you drove through the drive-thru, they asked you to make a separate check for your your water bill. And I had to pay mine today with two separate checks. Uh, they're not there. Do you can you can barely if you you I normally get my water bill just about two days before my electric bill is due. So most people you've got ten days or more in between on most of them. And a lot of people don't pay them both at the same. Uh, any other questions, Alderman Thomas? I guess there's one sentence here that says, we will continue for now a customer service presence in North Little Rock uh, City Service Building. Is that telling us that soon that will not take place anymore? They don't, I don't know that they know the answer to that. I can tell you that that, that was not an answer that's acceptable to me. For now, it's forever, as far as I'm concerned. Well, I would say so, too. I would strongly agree that we need that and we also need to make sure that if the electronic method or telephone method is causing some problems because some of our, our older citizens may not feel comfortable talking on the phone and punching buttons and things and that can get cumbersome I mean, real quick and you're frustrated. So I think that we need to explore having a live person there to <coughs> take care of our citizens. And, and Most I'm, definitely. I'm leaning in that same direction. Uh, you know, now, Mr. Reagan, if I wanted to come in and 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 turn on my water service, uh, and, and I'm a new customer uh, from North Little Rock, how 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 would I do that? You would you would have to use one of the customer service phones of the two booths that they have there, and call over and get it done. And in some instances, depending on your credit rating, uh, it's bad got a bad history with the water company, you still have to go to Little Rock and see them face to face. Now, where is their office? Uh, it's a uh, block off Main on Capitol, uh, across from the old Stevens folks. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember the address of it. But, uh, Scott? Uh, it's it's uh, 211, uh, 211 East Capitol. Is there plenty of parking over there? <laughs> no. Well, not, not free. Well, no. wait a second. Is there... 
to the best of my knowledge, there's a parking lot behind it that has space for water uh, customers, and plus the uh, parking. Well, I guess probably the parking on the street has probably been blocked. Is this is, when did when did this start? April first. Okay, so it hadn't started yet. Correct. Okay. Well, let me see if I can visit with Mr. Harvey, and we'll see what kind of opportunities we have to keep things the same. Okay. Mayor. Yes. If I may, one thing that we've been working on, and and the computer people are supposed to be trying to to get this fixed before April first, is that when we're taking the information for an electric customer, that we could go ahead and take the information for the water customer and email it over to Central Arkansas Water, so they won't have to get on the telephone. And we're not sure we're going to be able to get that done, but but we're, we're looking at it and trying to get that done. Well, if you if you help me remember, Mr. Smith, uh, to to talk to Mr. Harvey in the morning, uh, you know, I want to I want to make sure that that you know that I am kept up, I am kept aware of this transition. And right now, you know, part of my strong feelings were that in terms of our customers and how they're serviced, that that would not change. And I'm hearing something different than what I originally anticipated. One of the problems is we don't have the information on the customers. Uh, all, all that we are going to be able to get is what their balance is. So we can't pull up uh, how well a customer pays or if, they, if they've if they got bad credit on a previous account. That's what's creating the problem because we don't have access into their computer system. And that's what's creating a lot of problems. And don't know that we will ever have access to their computer system. Well, I don't mind us not having access. I'd like somebody that, that that's physically located <laughs> in North Little Rock to have access. So. That would be possible, sir. Well, that's what I think we're very interested in seeing happen. So, you know, you and me then need to visit with Mr. Harvey tomorrow. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions on this, on the motion? Gibson? Yes. Hilding? Yes. Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Vestal? Yes. Pipe? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. It's all of the communications? Uh, before... I just want to have a question. Oh, I'm on. sorry. What's your question? I just, on this, uh... On this letter that we, uh, that we as a uh, group, uh, sent to the Alcohol Beverage Control Division concerning the application for the Gentlemen's Club 70, which I, uh, they were applying for a private club. It's my knowledge that the uh, permit was declined. In here, in the letter, it says application is scheduled for consideration. If the permit is approved, this establishment would be allowed to serve alcohol from 7 till 2. Is that the only difference? And a private club and a non-private club is one hour. I thought it was 5 a.m. It's a new. It's a new permit. They, they've got. I think there are a couple different. Yeah. Older permits that allowed the uh, permittees to stay up until five o'clock. That's the one that we litigated and we lost when the city tried to shrink it those hours but the newer permits are up i believe two and one o'clock okay so there are differing times for private clubs and just to let you know they were a private club beforehand they just wish for a new permit to change it and i was just i was just questioning the one hour difference I mean. well and let me let me add uh, that that this was an initial decision by the, the administrator the director of uh, the alcohol beverage control uh, there there's very regularly appeals to the full board uh, and you know, I don't know that that decision is, uh, that I don't know that they decided to appeal. And, and obviously, if they did, then there's still a possibility that that the initial decision would be overturned. Okay. Alderman, you could be there. I, I've been there. You could go to that hearing if they appeal. Yeah. To the full board. That's. Well, I was just questioning. I thought I, I thought it was more than one hour difference as far as a private club versus a non-private club. And I, th I thought all private clubs could stay up to 5 a.m. With this, with, I was just questioning that. All right, uh, before we go uh, to uh, the special call, uh, uh, unless there's an objection, I, I understand the Junior League of North Little Rock, Ms. Long and Ms. Hall are here. Would y'all like to come to the microphone? I think you've got a little opportunity for me and, uh, and, and my waistline, as I understand it. Okay. On behalf of the North Florida Junior League, we would like to present you with our newest cookbook, Natural Temptations, um, to show our appreciation for your continued support for the North Florida Junior League. Well, and I, and I sure appreciate that. I, I, on behalf of, uh, of the city, you know, we certainly 
do uh, enjoy our relationship with Norbert Junior League and, uh, and all the good things that you and, and the ladies of, uh, of the Junior League do and have done for our city uh, and, and in, in recognition of that. And I'm going to accept this on behalf of Norbert Norwalk Public Library. Uh, and so any council member who wants to go down and check this out can also enjoy you know, the temptations and uh, the natural temptations. So if I could uh, uh, share with, with y'all and let you know that, that I, Patrick Hayes, uh, Mayor of Norwalk, Rock, this city to proclaim this day, the 25th day of February 2002, is Natural Temptations Day in honor of uh, their cookbook being a must-have cookbook in the city of Norwalk. Rock. So thank you all very much, and we just appreciate it. All right, this guy here. Come here, too. He is? Well, he's I know, and that's what he did for. All right. Thank you all very much. They have two people in the world for already. Yes, there are a lot more of these cookbooks that can be acquired for, for a nominal. <laughs> and, and all of the proceeds go for a terrific bunch of, uh, of, of projects and help on the rock So we, we appreciate y'all and appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Mayor, if I can add, my wife has tested several of those recipes and used me as a uh, tester, and they're all excellent. And none, of, none of them had your waistline. None. Thank you all very much. Uh, now on the special call, can you read the special call, Ms. Whitby? Yes, sir. This is dated February 22, 2002. Honorable members of the City Council regarding special call council meeting. Dear members of the City Council, this is to advise that we have scheduled that we have called a special council meeting of the North Little Rock City Council for 7:05 p.m. February 25, 2002, at City Hall Council Chambers, North Little Rock, Arkansas. The following will be on the agenda: an ordinance amending the current City of North Little Rock, Arkansas Pension Trust, adopted by Ordinance Number 6636, and adopting and substituting a revised pension plan, therefore in compliance. With federal legislation respectfully submitted, Mayor Patrick H. Hayes, and this is signed by all eight aldermen. Uh, would you please read the uh, uh, legislation? This is an ordinance amending the current city of North Rock, Arkansas Pension Trust, adopted by ordinance number 6636, and adopted and substituting a revised pension plan, therefore in compliance with federal legislation. First reading. Uh, I would like to ask Mr. Susky to take a brief moment to explain it and then subject to that explanation ask for a motion. Yes, Mayor, thank you. First of all, I want to apologize for the uh, late hour of this. I'm going to give you a little background. On uh, February 28th, uh, here in a couple of days, we're required by federal law to submit our plan to ensure that the changes are in compliance with recent federal enactments. Uh, so what we did is we took a review of this, asked outside counsel who specializes in this area of law to look at it. And we found that there have been no sub substantial changes to comply with federal law in, I believe, about 10 years. So as a result, it was our opinion that what we needed to do is to do a complete uh, revision as it relates to the requirements under federal law. There are no changes to the substance the amount of money to the benefits. It's purely changes to com come into compliance with the uh, federal laws that I believe are stated in section one of the ordinance. Uh, this guy, uh, in selecting the law firm, one of the prime uh, uh, indicators we looked at to help us uh, with the drafting was a law firm that could get it done by the, out, out, by, the, uh, by the deadline. They were able to get it to us Friday afternoon and that's when we got this special call out. We do want to spend some time. We start the process today of doing the comparison, make sure there's no errors or anything we need, which will require us to go back and amend it. But what this will do will allow us to meet the deadline, get it submitted to the IRS for their determination. And if they find that there's any changes we need to make, uh, it needs to, you know, we'll have to come back to the council. But it's this needs to be done to get filed by the 28th. If there's anything else that needs to be changed, the, obviously the IRS will, will let us know. Uh, any questions from any member of the council? Uh, uh, this, well, <coughs> I, I think what we need to do, Mayor, is we need to pass it if we find, I mean, we, we the pension board didn't even have a copy of this today. So uh, we probably, I understand we need to pass it. 
And if we find substantial things in it that are wrong, we'll ask you by Friday to veto it. And then they'll do a special call. And, and what was the firm that helped us? Uh, Tom Over, Overstreet. He's an attorney uh, who specializes in this area, and he was the one that was able to, his firm, to get it done by fr our, our Friday deadline. We hoped somebody could get it done by Tuesday filing, but we didn't find anybody that could do it for us. Alderman Yelding. Okay, I just have one question. You said that there's there's nothing changed in the amount of money or anything like that. That's correct. Right. Is there any changes as far as people? Are there any changes people as far as people that are covered under this that haven't been covered, or people that haven't been covered that that are not covered? No. This is okay. purely notice and procedural requirements by new federal laws that have okay. been adopted. Okay. Well, I don't have a problem doing what Martin gets for Alderman yeah. Gibson is suggesting. And I apologize for the deadline, but we're on their tight okay. time crunch. Uh, I need a motion to Spencer. I'm motion. So move. Second. Second. On the motion. Gibson? Yes. Yielding? Yes. Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Vestal? Yes. Fight? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. This is an ordinance amend the current city of North Little Rock, Arkansas Pension Trust adopted by ordinance number 6636 in adopting and substituting the revised pension plan, therefore in compliance with federal legislation. Second reading. Moved to rules place the ordinance on its third reading. Second. On the motion. Gibson? Yes. Gilding? Yes. Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Vestal? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. An ordinance amend the current city of North Rock, Arkansas Pension Trust adopted by ordinance number 6636 in adopting and substituting the revised pension plan therefore in compliance with federal legislation. Third and final reading. On the question. Gibson. Yes. Gilding. Yes. Dobbins. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Vestal. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. On the emergency. Gibson. Yes. Gilding. Yes. Dobbins. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Vestal. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. Go to old business. First item is resolution 0216, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. This is a resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to deed the Memorial Hospital Complex to the State Building Services Department of Arkansas. Now I have a motion. Somebody. Motion made and seconded. Let me just indicate to the council that I, you know, I visited with uh, uh, Mr. Lehman uh, today, and and while uh, the state has not made a final decision as to whether or not they want to to take it, uh, you know, I, I think it would be. Uh, at least clear clear the air somewhat uh, as to what the council's intention would be. I would not intend to go forward with deeding it until, you know, obviously I got that uh, uh, commitment from the state and, and, and the commitment, you know, that they were going to remain up there and that they were going to utilize that uh, building uh, and renovate it uh, to house uh, state agencies as well as to utilize the real estate uh, for additional state agencies. Uh, uh, with that, uh, Alderman Thomas. Mayor, one of the things that I guess I uh, have in mind here that a lot of people spend a lot of time and it meant, it meant a lot to them, and this may be very well the, the best uh, thing we could do. Would we, uh, would there be a reversion clause? Should they ever cease to operate it for the state uh, uh, as there, if we anticipate that it would go back to the city? I certainly don't have a problem with uh, discussing that issue, and unless there's a good reason that that uh, you know if they ever cease to use it as state property, I wouldn't see that uh, you know that that would be a problem. That uh, you know unless they can present something to me that that would justify it, that if if they ever cease using it for a state facility, it reverts back to the city. I mean, unless I mean they may be able to make a case for that. I doubt that they would ever intend. Uh, but I guess I if I was if I was going to, I mean, I guess if I'm trying to put myself into their in their shoes, if they were going to spend, you know, ten to fifteen million dollars, uh, you know, in, uh, or eight to ten million dollars in improving it, and then maybe add several other facilities there, uh, Lord, I I just couldn't envision them ever thinking about doing that. But if they were trying to get some kind of financing, or there might be some kind of abstract rule, uh, you know, they may raise that, but. But I'll sure raise it. Let's just put it that way. Before I before I sign it, I would sure raise that and find and and have a good reason why not. And I guess one other thing that had been mentioned to me is that we have the house and we have a lot of additional land there that they wouldn't be using now. Uh, I'd like to offer an amendment that we give give them the uh, the hospital and the, the parking area and 
and uh, we keep the additional land, and should they need that later, we can still do that. But, I, uh, I would, you know, I mean, obviously you have a right to offer an amendment. Uh, I, I offered that kind of amendment in the discussions to them, and they indicated that, you know, that they they felt that they would want all the additional land so that they could build additional facilities on that, and in order for them to invest the money that it would take uh, to rehab the hospital, uh, that they, you know, would, uh, they took the position they wanted the entire track. So, I mean, I, I would have to argue against that simply because I, I argued for it in the first time, in the first place. And I just want to make it as a, as a uh, offer an amendment, and I don't know if there's any other field the same way or not. Uh, is there a second? Second to the amendment? Uh-huh. No, I'm not doing that. I just had a statement. Okay, my... well, right now, I just, let's just get a sense. Uh, you know, is there, a, is there a second to an amendment to only give the property that's necessary to the hospital and, and parking? I I'm, I'm hadn't given up on uh, some alternative uses on it, so I think that... Well, I'm going to say that motion dies for lack of a second. Uh, we're still on the main motion, and uh, you know, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, Alderman Yielding? Can I just, I just want to clarify, clarify this, and that... And that is that the state has the first right of refusal at the end of July. I think their lease is through July, right? Uh, Mr. Smith, when's the state's lease up? <coughs> uh, it'll be about October. Oh, yeah, October. Please. Okay. So it's through October, and and even at that time, they have the first right of refusal to decide. So they're basically in the driver's seat as far as the property is concerned anyway. And... Uh, and also what we'd be doing tonight is giving the mayor the authority to and the city clerk to uh, convey the property to the state provided that the state is going to do what they say and that is to go ahead and rehab the property and invest the money there so we're actually if we were to vote for this tonight we're not going to be giving the property to the state tomorrow we're only going to be doing that when they get ready to do it because as uh, Robert Lehman said at the last meeting when he was here, they're not ready for it. So we're not going to go ahead and give them the, 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 the building and the land until they're ready for it. And if they don't ever get the financing correct because of budget problems with the state or whatever, then the mayor's certainly not going to convey it to him, I would say. Correct? Absolutely. So, uh, so we're not going to be giving it to them for some speculative purpose or to build a park up there or to whatever else they might could do with it. So... So all we're doing, all we're doing, sort of, is letting them know that. Well, we are doing this. We're letting the state know that that you know they can they can sort of bank on the fact that we will do it if they do what they're going to say, and then the mayor can go ahead and execute the agreement. So actually, if somebody else has another use for this, they can continue to work on this to see if they can come up with it, because because the, the state's already in the driver's seat because they have first rights of refusal through the lease to decide if they want it or not. So, I mean, that's. That's kind of what I'm seeing. I mean, it, it, is that correct? As far as I know, that's correct. Okay. All right. Well, others can still, okay. yeah. others can still come in and try to do it. The mayor's not going to convey it because he said he's not and unless... Uh, if, and, the state, if the state does not come forward based on the right. representation and plans that are made, then, then obviously there won't be a conveyance. Uh, you know, this, this pretty much goes on record as to the fact that letting the state know that if they do what they said they were going to do with us, then, then the property will be there. Right. And then that gives other groups a chance to go ahead and continue to work on other th other other things, and if the state doesn't come through with it, then, the, then they'll be ready, or they can either work with the state to, to do what they want to do. Yeah, I okay. just, I would more emphasize, now. I'll turn it over to uh, Alderman uh, Thomas, you know, that, that we are, assuming that we go forward with this, this does not mean that, that as I've said by my conversation with Bob Lehman earlier today, this does not mean that they're ready to take it. I know we've dealt with one individual who said that there was that they that he was going to make an offer. I think Mr. Smith talked to him today, and yeah, he's not to prepared him. to make an offer. Uh, so right now, there's no one that I'm aware of, other than uh, you know the, the lady that was here last time, who's expressed any uh, interest in. And if somebody came through in the morning and wanted to write us a check, uh, you know I'd sure come back to this council and entertain it. Okay. That's what I wanted to do, uh, Mayor, was to echo what you just said. Uh, Mr. Finley, who uh, made a strong case uh, that he had a developer or a purchaser for that property, has informed me today that he doesn't. That's... Alderman Thomas? 
But what he told me today was that he felt he could do a better job working with the state than he could with us. So he just did <laughs> And uh, um, told you more than he told me. What he told me too. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he told you? He told me that, but he said he could work with me. Okay. <laughs> he didn't talk to me. Well, let me ask one other question, oh, right. and, and I'm going to this as, as well. But what is the value of the land we're giving the state? Uh, it depends on whether it's with or without the, the hospital. Uh, you know, we, we've gotten you know an estimate that it's going to cost us a half a million or better to tear it down. You know, that real estate up there, you know, I, I don't know if we've had an appraisal of the remaining real estate without the hospital. I, I just don't know. But well, we, had, we had several appraisals done three or four years ago when we first started this process, and <coughs> there was a, a very large range that would run from 1.2 to 3.5 million dollars or something to that effect. The land and, then we, and, the, and then we asked that question, Alderman, and this was three or four years ago, uh, and, I, and they said if the if the property was completely cleared, uh, that it might be worth a million dollars, and it's going to cost at least a half a million or more, <coughs> depending on uh, asbestos asbestos abatement, and that could run. You know, a million dollars, so it's probably worth less than what it would cost. All right. No, so basically, if uh, this uh, we approve this, then we there's still opportunities for some other type of development to take place just as soon as someone comes up with the money. It's, that's this 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 right here is just the first option on the table. Then. Well, what this is, and, and, and I, you know, I certainly don't want to mislead anybody. You know, if you know. If the state comes through with what they say, then, then this is saying that we're going to do this. But, but I, you know, I want to underline what I've, my conversation has been is that the state is not ready to say we're going forward with what we've represented to you. They've still got you know, a few hurdles to overcome before they're ready to say, it's, you know, let's go. So, you know, you also heard, and I, I don't know if you heard, I, I assume you may have, I know I have in my discussion with Mr. Layman. You know that if, if the city, you know, really had something else they wanted to do with it, you know, then 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 they would be the first to partner with the city in, in recognizing that. So, you know, if, if the state, if we had some real great opportunity that came forward, I would bet you that I could go to Mr. Layman and tell him, you know, that I need to go back to the council and uh, and and uh, and bring this other opportunity back, and yeah, I'm sure he'd be the first to say fine. Uh, with that on. I'm sorry, Alderman Barry. And you said you were going to go try to get an opt-out. If they opt-out of having the property, they're going to bring it back to us. Well, what I said I'd, I'd discuss with them is, is whether or not, based on Alderman Thomas's comment, that if they ever, in the future, ever cease using it for a state purpose, whether or not they'd have any objection to a reversion back to the city. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know that they would, but I certainly would be willing to bring that up. I'm not saying that, that they, that that they wouldn't object to that, but I, mean, I know if I was getting ready to invest eight, ten million dollars in in a piece of property that may or may not be worth uh, anything uh, as is, you know, I may not I may not want a reversion. I may want to have it so I could sell to the benefit of the of the uh, of the state in ten, twenty, thirty years. I I may choose to do that. So I can't say that what Alderman Thomas raised, they wouldn't object to. It. I think I probably would if I, I was would. going to invest that much money in it. <laughs> but I'll sure raise it with them. Yeah. Any other uh, comments or questions on the motion? Gibson? Yes. Yielding? Yes. Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Festel? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll see where that leads us. And the next, next item. Next item is Ordinance 0192, Mayor Hayes. It's been read three times, and this is the final time on the agenda. Yeah, uh, I may, Mr. Voles. All right, well, let's refile this, uh, Mr. Suskin. Uh, do you, Mr. Voles, come back to the microphone? Uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't intend to let this languish for, you know, six months. Uh, can you give me an idea of when the Planning Commission may give us some recommendations? I hope next month. We. Staff gave a presentation, a recommendation this last month, and uh, there was debate about it, and they want to think about something different. All right. So I think well, visit with me about what they're thinking so that I can be there next time to see if okay. they're thinking like I'm thinking. All right. I think they are. Okay.
All right, well, refile this to the next council meeting. Next item. Ordinance 0208. This is Alderman Witcher, and it has been read three times. <coughs> Mayor, with, I'm going to withdraw this, and with that, I'm going to also give an explanation. Right now, Mr. Reagan and Mr. Spence are team of the group of folks uh, regarding realigning uh, fees in this area, and I think it would probably be better if we came back with a comprehensive package uh, a little bit later on, whenever we get those things figured. I, I think. Uh, Mr. Reagan, are we about a month away? Maybe. Withdraw. Next item. Let's go to new business. Resolution 0226, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. Resolution reappointing Charlie Jamison to the Advertising and Promotion Commission. Move for adoption. Second. On the motion. Gibson. Yes. Yielding. Yes. Dobbins. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Vestal. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. Resolution 0227, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution reappointing Rosemary Hamill to the North Little Rock Historic District Commission. Move the adoption. Second. Second. On the motion. Gibson. Yes. Yielding. Yes. Dobbins. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Vestal. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. Next item, resolution 0228, Alderman Dobbins. Please call it. A resolution appointing Ken Lewis to the North Little Rock Civil Service Commission. I move the adoption. Second, oh. uh, and to also bring Please. in the personal information sheet. And I only have one question. All right. It's rare that a uh, alderman one ward appoints an, uh, a person living in another ward into a civil service commission. I only make the statement. Okay. Uh, I wasn't aware of it, obviously, because we didn't get the personal information sheet until we got here. Mr. Lewis lives in Ward 4. Yeah. And has a home in Ward 2. All right. Uh, as we as we as we go, uh, let me just places. repeat. Uh, we've got seven civil service commissioners. You know, we uh, uh, the appointment is is one of the councils, and uh, and and I certainly involve myself to the extent that I have the opportunity to do that. But I defer uh, in most instances to to the council members of the ward. This vacancy occurred in Alderman Thomas and Alderman Dobbins mm -hmm. ward, mm -hmm. and so we certainly respect their choice. Uh, I do. Uh, with that, uh, there's a motion made and seconded on well, the motion. I'm Mayor, sorry. And all right, for one more time for clarification, where does Mr. Lewis live? 5805 North Cedar. So he lives in Ward 4. Right. right. Yes. Yeah. On the motion. On the motion. Gibson? Yes. Yielding? Yes. Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Vestal? Yes. Height? No. And Witcher? No. Six to two, motion okay. passes. M Mayor, I want to say something, Mr. Dobbs. You know, it's a courtesy. Don't ever try to appoint somebody from Ward Four again uh, without asking us. Would you I wasn't aware of the uh, the actual ruling on that. Uh, however, I know from time to time you have actually uh, had legislation in Ward Two, so well, I would yeah, I, I, I would not I would, I would appreciate that same courtesy. Uh, well, you know, that's not I'm going to rule you. I'm going to rule those comments out of order. I would appreciate that courtesy. I'm going to do rule those comments out of order. Next item. Resolution 0229, Alderman Yielding. Mayor. Okay, I did not vote in affirmative, but I'd like to call it, let's, if someone would call it back up, you know, if you know, with that kind of attitude, you know, I just don't want the person on the commission. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Before. I'm sorry. That's you know, the legislation call it back. adopted. No, uh, it's it's guys, done. Yeah. Next item. Alderman Yielding, 0229. Call it. A resolution declaring certain buildings, houses, and other structures located in the city of North Little Rock to constitute a public nuisance and condemning said structures, providing a period of time for property owner to abate said nuisance. Does this require public hearing? Uh, uh, yes, I need to get a. Uh, March. So I guess moved. we need to get it. I'll just go ahead and call the public hearing before I ask for a motion. Uh, uh, 82, 8, 8, 824 West 36, uh, public hearing. It's open. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'm, I'm Terrence Suffin. Um, my mom and dad owns this house. We have just reached agreement with a man at Donald Beasley who's here tonight to sell the house to him. He intends to uh, upgraded and updated and living it. Tell you what, I'm going to do what I do the most every instance uh, is I'm going to give you two weeks, Mr. Uh, Sipes. See this, Jeff? My ordinance, me? my resolution. Oh, I'm sorry, it is your resolution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Right. Well, 
Well, I, normally that doesn't happen, yeah. but uh, not my legislation. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do the same thing he was going to do, okay? And I'm telling you that, that the neighbors have called me about the house. Uh, code, there's a letter talking, you know, telling the, the steps that code enforcement has taken in order to get the house uh, uh, back up to standards and so people don't live in the house, so transients don't live in the house, so the house doesn't catch on fire. I mean, there's pictures. Everybody can see what the house looks like. Everybody needs to take a look. It's just a real nice place. And, uh, you know, that's right. You've got two weeks for somebody not only to sell the house, but to start working and clean it up where it doesn't look like it does in these photos. Because if you don't, uh, I'm going to call it back up to condemn the house and tear it down. These people that live across the street, and I understand it's an estate, and, and you know, but... The people that live in that area don't have to put up with these kind of conditions. And it's been this way for a long, long time. Two years. Two years it's been this way. That's way too long. So now you've had two years, and now you do have two weeks until the next meeting. You know, it finally, you know, it's amazing what it happens when you really sponsor one of these things. People just all of a sudden show up, and they're going to do good things. So you've got two weeks to not only... Uh, sell the house if that's what you're going to do but for whoever buys it to start work uh, because if you don't then I'm going to ask you know for it to be brought back up because the people that live in that area shouldn't have to put up with this so I mean that's it and you need to work with Mr. Sipes and I'll be talking with him and I talk with him all the time and I've been down there and I've look, been in the house and I've looked at it and I talk to the neighbors and so you got two weeks and I'd start tomorrow who is he? Right over there. See, so you don't even know who the head of the code enforcement is. I mean, you know, this is, it's just amazing. But anyway, you really have two weeks, and that's it. Thank you. So, okay, I'd start tonight. <laughs> Next item. Hmm. Resolution 0230, Mayor Hayes. That does have my name on it. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right, with that, uh, please read it. A resolution declaring certain buildings, houses, and other structures located in the city of North Little Rock to constitute a public nuisance and condemning said structures, providing a period of time for property owner to abate said nuisance. Uh, that is 1608 North Olive. Uh, I'm going to have a public hearing on 1608 North Olive. Anyone here want to talk about 1608 North Olive? Going once, going twice, gone. Uh, uh, do I have a motion? So moved. On the motion. Gibson? Yes. Gilding? Yes. Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Vestal? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Resolution 0231, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution declaring certain buildings, houses, and other structures located in the city of North Little Rock to constitute a public nuisance and condemning said structures, providing a period of time for property owner to abate said nuisance. All right, that uh, legislation deals with 109 East 16th Street. I'm going to call a public hearing on 109 East 16th Street. The microphone's open. Going once, going twice, adjourned. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. On the motion. Gibson? Yes. Gilding? Yes. Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Vestal? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Resolution 0232, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution declaring certain buildings, houses, and other structures located in the city of North Little Rock to constitute a public nuisance and condemning said structures, providing a period of time for property owner to abate said nuisance. Uh, that has to do with 205 South Laurel. That's 205 South Laurel, L-A-U-R-E-L. -E public hearing on that. Anyone here care to comment on that uh, address? Uh, turn the public hearing on a motion. Do I have? So moved. Mm -hmm. Motion made and seconded. On the motion, Ms. Whitley. Gibson? Yes. Gilding? Yes. Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Vestal? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Resolution 0233, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. A resolution appropriating $18,655 <coughs> from the 2001 short-term finance account for asbestos abatement in conjunction with renovations to the Lehman Library. Move the adoption. Second. Second. Uh, on the motion. Gibson? Yes. Gilding? Yes. Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Vestal? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Uh, I don't see Mr. Baskins out there, but I'm sure on his behalf I can invite the council, the community, and everyone else that might care to come uh, with the adoption of this legislation. Uh, we're going to have a shovel turning. Uh, actually, I guess a shovel turning. Uh, 
uh, March the 5th, which is next Tuesday, a week from a week from tomorrow at 3.30 in the afternoon at the library. I requested that I have a bulldozer there for you to drive. Oh, they're wise. That was a wise request, all. Uh, so anyone that wants to come and help uh, celebrate uh, that, uh, I know that this asbestos removal will cause the library to be closed. Uh, I believe, see, uh, help me out. I know starting next week. Excuse me, somebody remember? Yeah, but when did it start? Next week, so, yeah. Okay, yeah, so we'll, next week, uh, you know, with this asbestos removal, the library will be closed the biggest part of next week. So we want to make sure that, you know, that uh, I think probably be open Monday, but then maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the remainder of the week. Uh, check uh, the library before you go down there next week if you're inclined, because in all likelihood, you may not be able to get in. Uh, with that, uh, next item. Ordinance 0216, Mayor Hayes. Please read it. This is an ordinance setting forth the responsibilities of utilities use of public right-of-way for street or curb cuts, repealing section 94-21 through section 94-54 of the North Rock Municipal Code. First reading. I'm going to hold that. Uh, we're still doing a little work on that, so I'm going to bring that up for uh, consideration maybe the next council meeting. All of it. Is, is, uh, well, I noticed it doesn't have the cost in there of the permit, but also is this uh, legislation to take care of some of these people who come in, these fiber companies and people and just cut through and or maybe even the gas company and just leave kind of like my driveway's been that way for three months and they said they were going to come back and fix it after they cut a big that's, hole out of it. That's the purpose of what's inspiring the discussion of this. Okay. Yes. Can there be, uh, or would there just be uh, city attorney just the normal fines uh, of any statute like up to $500 or could there be some kind of fine in here for people that just go and do this? And yes. Sell it, yeah, under this, if you do it without a permit, it's unlawful and you can be fined up to $500. Okay. But well, we probably should put, like, up to, we probably just should put, like, minimum. <laughs> Instead of, like, up to, well, because some we, of this is getting pretty ridiculous. We sure can, but, uh, you know, feel free to bring it up when we... Okay. You know, right now, I'm, I'm not, i am just had it read and we'll... Uh, you know, you can make suggestions to us, city attorney. Uh, we'll be happy to. Okay. All the time. I think we have to keep in mind. I, I agree with you. We have a problem there, but we have to keep in mind that we have to call on them to move those utilities when we're doing those streets. We have to wait on them, and if they don't do it, we we can't continue. I know we got several CD projects that, unless you get those utilities moved, you can't uh, you can't uh, continue. So we have to work. There's two sides of the coin. So we have to, But I know that. Uh, there is a, a lot of new streets. We just almost the time we're finished, and they're in there cutting uh, holes in there again to put these utilities in. It's 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 bad, but we still have to wait on them to move those uh, telephone lines and gas lines. Next item. Ordinance 0217, Mayor Hayes. Please call it. This is an ordinance waiving the former bidding process and authorizing the purchase of a curb and kitty bumper bolts for fun land, appropriating funds for such purchase. First reading. Do I have a motion? Motion. Spin rules place, place on, on second. second reading. On the motion. Gibson? Yes. Yielding? Yes. Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Vestal? Yes. Height? Yes. Witcher? Yes. In ordinance waiving in the form of bidding process and authorizing the purchase of a carousel and kitty bumper boats for fund land, appropriating funds for such purchase. Second reading. Spin rules place on third reading. Second. There a motion. All right. On the motion. Gibson. Yes. Yielding. Yes. Dobbins. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Barry. Yes. Vestal. Yes. Height. Yes. And Witcher. Yes. And ordinance waiving the former bidding process and authorizing the purchase of a carousel and kitty bumper boats for fun land, appropriating funds for such purchase. Third and final reading. Question, Alderman please. Uh, yeah. All right. Alderman Thomas had a question, too. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, you want to come to the microphone? I, I remember in, in uh, several years past, we had... Uh, Alderman, who not here any longer, but who uh, questioned, you know, our waiving of bids, and, and I know this time you need to do that. Uh, is this one of the times that we can't take reg uh, bids for this type of material? There, the, the reason is there's such a variety on carousels. It's hard to write specific specifications to do this. Uh, we actually, uh, Mr. Wortham, that works with the Lions Club, uh, we've sent him to a trade show 
uh, with these different kind of items, and this is what came back as a selection. There's, you know, you can get used ones, you can get them up to 110,000, you can get them for 50,000, you can get them all prices. But this is a new one, and we felt like this was the, the best we could do for the city. No. I mean, it, I mean, I'd have to agree. Uh, these things come in so such broad varieties, price ranges, used, new. That, you know, that uh, this is a recommendation of of the Parks Commission, uh, Parks Department, Mr. Wortham, the Lions Club, and uh, and and you know, it's 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 essentially, you know, one that, you know, that. Uh, uh, well, obviously, we're recommending, or we wouldn't have filed the legislation. But how do we know we're getting a good deal? Uh, there are some, Mr. Rhodes. You've got different comparisons, don't you? <coughs> I, mean, I mean, you've got a market out there, and uh, I mean, there, I mean, like I say, there's a wide range, and this this we felt like it fit uh, fit our best needs, and it's new. Not, we don't have the mechanical problems since it's new. There's a warranty, and, and that's that's kind of. I think there was a considerable research done. Just a second. Uh, Alderman, was there some? I thought there was something. Yeah. One now. Mayor, I think I had a question. Oh, it's Alderman, Alderman Witcher. I'm sorry, Alderman. Sorry. I, I knew somebody had raised her hand. Alderman okay. Witcher. I, I guess the only question I have is on, on the boats. Do we have an ocean for them? <laughs> uh, we're working locally with two pool people uh, to work a sponsorship type situation. For that, the pool that they go in. All right, Alderman Height and then Alderman Barry. It was just my understanding that there was considerable research done on Carousel, and as far as getting the biggest bang for our buck, this is the one y'all recommended. Yes. Alderman Barry. All right. Uh, that's what I wanted. I was wondering about the pool because it said no pool, but we did get a special on the bumper boat. Huh? This was done. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, since you brought up the sponsorship uh, thing, I noticed in reading the uh, North Park Times. That they were uh, were going to allow the uh, Lions Club to have sponsorship signs. These are small. These are small signs on each hole, about about the size of about. From what I understand, okay. You and then we're just also discussing signs for the different rides that are going to be <laughs> approximately the size of a speed uh, speed limit sign. Okay. Um, since did the Parks Commission not make a ruling that we could not have advertisement signs in the park? Uh, I'm not totally familiar. The way, I, the way I remember it, there was a limited number of signs that was you're talking about specifically on the baseball, softball fields. There was a specific limited number in those fields, on those areas. And I, if, if I'm not, if I'm correct, I believe that was limited to the people <coughs> that donated materials for the construction or time to uh, the to I'm the not facility. Totally, I'm not totally familiar with that. That did happen before I was here. But there well, because the only reason I the only reason I know that is because there's a sign immediately to the left of the signs in the softball complex that says materials and donations by and points this way, and that's where the signage is. Now, um, if the Lions Club, I would like the Park Commission to clarify this, okay. because you know here we are in such a tight pinch with the uh, Parks Commission budget. And those signs out there, there's spacing out there that these associations can um, raise additional funds for their operation by renting the lease, by renting those uh, fence signs out per year, as much as $350 per sign. Now, you know, we'll we'll re review that. I'll I'll bring the commission next week. I would appreciate that. Okay. Anything, you know, I'm sure these associations are willing to do anything they can to help the uh, financial situation of the Park Department. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions on carousel or bumper boats? Yeah, I, I want to get a motion to uh, move. We, uh, uh, third and final. Move for adoption. Second. Motion made, seconded that we approve on third and final reading of Ms. Whitby. Gibson? Yes. Gilding? Yes. Dobbin? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Vestal? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. On the emergency, Gibson? Yes. Gilding? Yes. Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Vestal? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. That's it, right? <coughs> yes, sir. Any council member? Alderman Gibson. <clears throat> May there's been some discussion about the uh, a sign that was posted at the North Rock Health Department in regard to that they will be closed on uh, 
the 28th, which I believe is Thursday this week, from 12 to 4.30. I met with uh, uh, Deborah Hollis and Miss Wood today in regard to the uh, to that, and, and uh, I, I guess the first thing we probably ought to do is introduce her because at this point she's the interim director of the Norfolk Rock Health Department. Hollis is back there somewhere. Just Deborah come to Hollis, the you want to come to the microphone, the microphone just a yourself? minute? I met with them today basically because of my concern and and if you you have a letter in from you in front of you here the, and the, really the last line they they go on to explain that the fourth Thursday is usually their li their their lightest day and the last line says we do however understand and you appreciate your concerns that they're going to be closed we could do nothing about this Thursday but we'll make every effort to keep the unit open in the future okay. and I think that's all we can ask of them. We appreciate it. Do you have any comments? Well, I just, I'd like to apologize for not responding to your letter sooner. It was sent to my old office, and I didn't get it till this afternoon. And uh, we tried to get something to you as soon as we got it and sent you an email correcting that address that won't happen in the future. Well, I'm, 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 we had a chance to meet. I think uh, Ms. Hollis is, is, was at our last staff meeting, uh, and, yes, uh, and, and I apologize for sending it to the wrong address. We, we we look forward to working with you and uh, and and uh, we just sometimes want to make sure folks know that uh, that our doors are going to swing inward more often than not. Thanks a lot for the last sentence, Alderman Thomas. I, I guess I have not on this. So oh, okay. Thank okay. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Anything else, Alderman Gibson? <coughs> Alderman Thomas. I have two items. Uh, one, if we could, on Justin Avenue, we do have some potholes. It's really really deep out there and, and uh, if we could get something done about that uh, Mr. Archer took care of two uh, speeches we asked him for and he did a, a fine job and if we could get a little uh, asphalt in those potholes that would Justin make Avenue good. do you know is there Avenue. only a short spot on Justin it's, it's a couple of blocks but okay. there's it's, it's holes all down through there you know okay What's up? and I had one other thing I know all of us received the uh, neighborhood services bulletin and I think that uh, Dan and Shirley, they don't have a big staff, but they do a wonderful job. And I'd like to uh, go on record as uh, recommending them for the fine work they do. Well, we appreciate that. We, uh, we we like that group, and uh, and they do good work. And uh, and thank you for bringing it to our attention. We we uh, we applaud them, and we'll. I think Mr. Scott is here somewhere, probably. Yeah. And that's, so, uh, that's the way I keep yeah. up with all of our meetings. I have to keep that to keep up with them. Yeah. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Alderman Vestal, and then Alderman Dobbins. Uh, Mr. Ward, um, I don't know if we can do anything about it, but on MacArthur Drive there by the uh, Levy overpass, where the overpass begins there near the spot, there are two or three uh, potholes that we had. So someone's built in a couple of times, and we can get them on. We can check on them. Thank you. Yes, sir. Alderman Dobbins? I uh, just wanted to hear any feedback on a military exercise that took place in the city just any feedback from anybody i was having to be driving down the street and i saw all this marine unit it's like oh okay yeah just remember that was taking place and just want to know is there any phone calls or anything i really didn't get any but um I'm curious to Scott hear that <laughs> Theresa Burrow, she got <laughs> uh you know we had uh, you know obviously I mean, I don't know that my office got any calls. I certainly didn't talk to anyone that was, was concerned in a negative way. I, I, I think a few people like you were uh, surprised. I think word didn't get out to everyone. But once they understood uh, what was happening, you know, this community uh, stepped forward very strongly in, in trying to cooperate and, uh, and welcome the Marines and let them know that we appreciate what they do as well as the military. We had a, a reception, uh, General Moore, in fact, of the Arkansas National Guard. Uh, lent them uh, some equipment, uh, and and all of what we heard is that they uh, felt that uh, you know that that this city went the extra mile in trying to 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 contribute uh, in any way we could. Yeah, I was, what what surprised me was not that I knew it was there; it's just that the scope of it was so so large. I said, this is this is really really interesting. It's uh, also a sad commentary that we all have to be prepared for this. But the good thing is that we are being prepared in case something like this ever. Uh, a need arises. Well, it is. It is a strange feeling. I I went home after the ball game a week ago last Tuesday, uh, yeah. and and as I drove down Main Street, there were Marines on both sides with a Humvee mm -hmm. right in the middle. Right. It uh, it made you appreciate 
not having to live in a country where that's a, a regular occurrence. Good. Good. And you appreciate the time you spent doing those things. Absolutely. Uh, with that, uh, public comment section on the microphone is open. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry I, I, I have one other thing. All right, I want to ask about the passage of uh, Resolution 0228, please. Okay, as, as I recall, our rules of procedure, we require that a personnel information sheet be attached to that piece of legislation upon filing. Otherwise, you have to amend it to the legislation. And, you know, and while I grant you, you know, we, we have done it informally, uh, you know, I would point out to you tonight that since, since this, in my opinion, uh, is a resolution that was not suited to all, that it is in fact not constituted properly because it was, the personnel sheet was not adopted by this council. I'd ask the city attorney for a formal opinion on that. I don't, I don't think it was formally amended. Most, there is a, there is a, a practice that we uh, attach those. I, I grant you that. I don't think there was a motion uh, to amend that in. Uh, however, I think that, you know, this council did adopt it and I'd have to defer to our city attorney as to whether or not you know, that uh, the neglect of doing that uh, uh, in fact caused that resolution not to be effective. Okay. And uh, and you can you know you can give me that you can give us that opinion whenever you feel it's appropriate. That's okay. a, that's a quick reaction. Okay. You know, I, I would submit to you since the resolution was was filed without personnel information sheet that this would be the same as an amendment to a resolution. Well, that's normally the way we treat it. Uh, I know that uh, that that was discussed and that no one made a formal motion to amend. Uh, you know, we need to take care of that now, or we can wait on the city attorney's opinion, depending <coughs> on what y'all's. Could you not uh, just uh, amend you until uh, right, uh, uh, veto it if we don't get the opinion? I mean, I could. That's. I mean, that. that I wouldn't need to veto it if his opinion was was uh, it's his opinion that would really would be the veto if he had concluded that the failure to attach that resolution would cause that I mean that that failure to attach that sheet caused that resolution to be uh, invalid. Let me just indicate what, what, that out. What are some of the options? Is to call it back up and amend it in. That's Mayor. correct, right. Mayor. Having voted in the affirmative on R O two twenty eight. I'd like to reconsider the motion to or the, the vote. All right, that's a proper motion. Is there a second? Second. Uh, on the motion to reconsider, Ms. Whitby? Gibson? Yes. Yielding? Yes. Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Vestal? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. All right, now it's back on the floor. Uh, do I have a motion to amend? Motion to amend in the uh, information sheet to resolution R0228. Is there a second? Uh, discussion on on Witcher. Okay. <clears throat> it has been a time honored between the eight people that sit on this council, the 12 years that I have been here, that you do not appoint someone out of your ward as an appointment and in someone else's ward. And you know, I, I know that you other six gentlemen, you know, would not want want. Charlie or I to appoint someone from your ward for a, a alderman's choice uh, position on a commission. You know, and I would ask for you, therefore, when you have the opportunity to consider that as you get ready to vote on this. Now, let me just remind everyone, you're voting to amend this as an attachment. You're not voting for the for or against the passage. We're simply voting to amend the personal information sheet. Uh, and, and let me ask any comments be reflected toward the amendment, not the substantive motion at this time. On the motion to amend, Ms. Whitby? Gibson? Yes. Gilding? Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Yes. Vestal? Yes. Height? Yes. And Witcher? Yes. Now, is there a motion to adopt as amended? So moved. I'll, I'll second. All right, now the discussion. I've had my, had my piece. All right, motion I guess, Norman Thomas? I guess I think... Um, I think you give me an extra commissioner here. I said me, our ward, when you give me Joe Simmons, come off the hill up there and think with one time uh, that you give us three commissioners when we should have just had two or we usually have two. That, 
just the reverse. I mean, because everyone knew Joe, and I think uh, at the time, uh, I'm not sure whether I sponsored him or who sponsored him, but we had uh, three. It was our of course. I have a question if maybe uh, Alderman Dobbins would, would consider uh, uh, pulling this tonight, and let's, uh, let's work this out amongst uh, amongst uh, citizens here in Royal Rock. I hate to see a fine general like Mr. Lewis getting caught up in the middle of a uh, skirmish down here on the city council. So if, uh, and then maybe that we could uh, have some contact with Mr. Lewis as far as Ward 4 Alderman are concerned. I, I, I think it's just time to vote. I'm uh, now ready to vote. I think uh, ready to move on. Uh, 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 Alderman Vestal? I do understand. Um, do we know, does anyone here know exactly what the content of the members of the Civil Service Commission are and what board they're from currently? That's what we need right now. Ms. Whitby? I can go get it if you'd like. Yes. It'll just take me a minute. All right. We're going to take about a three-minute recess. Ms. Whitby, I'd also, I don't know if it's easily defined, when we expanded the board from five members to seven members, we passed legislation which dictates several items in there as far as the makeup of that board. And we may have already been violating the make makeup of the board as we are. Okay. I don't remember that, but I'm not saying yeah, we did. We did. <laughs>
Done one since then, I think. Yeah, my my memory, uh, uh, obviously, and I don't want to call this meeting back in order. May not be accurate, but my recollection you know, was that we did have five, and that there was this is you know, that that the council appointed uh, the commission uh, that there was one from each board, and I my recollection was that was informal. Uh, and then, uh, then when we added these two, obviously there were, uh, each board obviously had one, but then there was one ward who didn't uh, have more than one, and that that ward would be rotated to on an informal basis. In other words, there was only a guarantee that each ward would have one, uh, but then, you know, then the ward that had one would be considered. Uh, and, and that was very informal. Uh, you know, there may be something else out there, but I sure don't recall it. Well, all right, all the building. So if we did this, there's going to be four people from Ward 4, two okay. from Ward 2, one from Ward 3, and none from Ward 1, so we're just like left out. Yeah. Mayor, what like if you look at it, I believe that Mark Pennebaker was in Ward 1 when he was appointed. He's moved to Ward 4. Joe Simmons, not positive, but I think he was in Ward 1 when he was appointed, and he's moved to Ward 2. How come all the people move out of your way? <laughs> <laughs> well, again, the only thing I can say is I, 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 I'm not, I'm not yeah, aware of any, you know, any, any uh, mandate. I know that there's been a, an understanding that each board would be represented, uh, and Obviously, unless the city attorney finds something that you know, is not there, then the will of the council is certainly to fail. Right here's a mess. Uh, there, I mean, there's many ways of looking at this, uh, and I, I really don't want to go in there, but I, I, there's many ways of looking at to add some diversity to, <coughs> to the structure. And, and when you have a board that has to hear all sides of the case, there has to be a diverse understanding and in this time and when we see what happens in other countries when you stuff out diversity and just make it a one way it's good to have a a, a global f a fabric to it that represents the community because when we get into civil service there's many aspects and many angles and many backgrounds that have to be considered when you make a decision much in the same way that we do here and I think it would be a good thing that we add this uh, person to this uh, commission, uh, replacing someone who has that diverse background also. And I think that's fair. Now, with there's various gentlemen agreements and various rules, but as new leadership comes into place, there's, there's new understanding. And uh, I would apologize to anybody that, uh, you know, Move on, and we can accept it. Uh, Mayor, let me let me just point okay. out something. Mr. Best uh, has has resigned, and so that is a vacant position. If I'm not mistaken. That's correct. And if it becomes from Ward One, <laughs> then Ward Three doesn't have a representative on there. And I truly believe that every single ward should have a person. That if a person moves out of your ward, you got the opportunity to reappoint some, but reappoint them when they come up. Uh, Joe, Simmons, Joe Simmons was reappointed by Ward 2 appointment when he went back in. Uh, and I, I'm concerned because we face a situation that if the next one is up, it's Buford Vest who's resigned. If I ask for it to be a Ward 1 one, then Ward 3 has no appointments on the board. And I don't think, I don't think either situation is fair. I don't think we were right. I mean. I completely agree with Alderman Gibson. Um, you know, the, this is an alderman. This is one of the few appointments that the alderman has. It's the only one. 
And um, in order to represent the people in my ward that elected me, I have to make sure that they're represented on every commission that's available to them. And, you know, diversity, I don't have a dirt. You know, there's there's no there's nothing that says that the ward one appointment would not be a diverse a person of diversity to this commission. You're just assuming that. No, I'm not. I'm just in making your argument for the person that, and I I, and I don't know this person from Adam or Eve for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. It's our responsibility as the electives, uh, electives of our ward to make sure that our wards are represented fairly on all the commissions. And therefore, I think we need to take a hard look at this and um, make sure that that area aspect of it is covered. The right to vote is the single most important right we as Americans have, period. Mayor, if I may make one more comment. And you know, during our break, I told Mr. Dobbins, I said, you know, if, if this individual had been from Ward 2, it would have been your choice, and I would have supported it 100%. Uh, but, I, you know, I had a problem when I figured out that it was from Ward 4. Uh, you know, now, with that, I don't mind having four people from Ward 4 on here, but I don't think it's right. So. Well, the only, you know, the only thing that, you know, of course, council, Council vote rules. Uh, you know, I, I don't know that we have, and I don't know obviously that, that Ward Two is always vote our, our minority uh, board. Uh, but uh, but I, I I look at the uh, and I don't believe that as I look through these that that we have a minority on there. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, and so you know, while I, I recognize what Alderman Gibson said, and certainly Alderman Vestal and uh, I, I, I do respect uh, the opportunity to have a minority on there. We have a, a significant minority uh, employee uh, group in, uh, in our city. Uh, we're very proud of that. Uh, and, and so I would, you know, I would recognize that, that there is an importance in, in uh, geographic diversity, but there's also an importance in racial diversity. And, and, and obviously we've got bit of a conflict that's running before the council and, and perhaps this is a time to change geography in, uh, in favor of, uh, of racial diversity and, uh, and this, uh, 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 this appointment obviously would address that. Now having said that, then you may, this may be an opportunity to have I, I did, well, oh, I, wait a minute. So, you know, anybody that wants, you know, you, everybody has a right, right to speak, but I just thought I'd all right. Say my All right, Alderman uh, Witcher. Okay. You know, the, the only thing I will say regarding these appointments is, you know, you know, Mr. Beaver Beavers uh, currently enjoys his his association with this commission. Mr. Hopkins does, and Mr. Pennebaker. And when all three of those individuals come up, I know that they want to stay on, and I know that Mr. Wright and I will be supporting those folks. And you need to understand that. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I currently like to make up this, you know, and I don't see black and white on here when I see these names. I just, you know, there's there's six uh, six gentlemen on here that obviously have, are doing a good job serving on the civil service commission. Uh, you said Mr. Well, Vest is Welch. gone, so that's one. Miss Welch. Miss Welch. Miss Welch. I'm sorry. All right, okay, but anyway, I like the makeup of this, and I know that I happen to know Don Beavers and Bob Hopkins and Mark Pennerbaker, and I think they are. You know, outstanding uh, as far as uh, participants and serving on that commission. Then again, it comes up there, the other wards are not uh, represented properly on here, so it's possible then that if there's two openings on here, that they already come from the wards not represented. Well, yeah, you know, everyone obviously is entitled to their opinion, and, uh, and I just said my piece. Anyone else? Uh, we, we, we're, there's a motion made and seconded uh, to. Uh, 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 as amended, uh, to nominate uh, uh, Mr. Lewis. Ken Lewis. Ken Lewis. Mr. Lewis, uh, on the motion. Gibson. Yeah, I, I had oh. a question. I'm He's here. Right. I don't know Mr. Lewis. I'm sure he's a very fine gentleman. 
we've got a problem. We've got a problem in the fact that Ward 1 is going to be without a representative on this board, on this, this board and commission, till the next one who would come up would be the person, would be Don Beaver. So we're going to be out until sometime next year. Right now, the next one's coming up, and unless I'm wrong, is Mr. Vest. Yeah, but when Mr. Vest, if, if we encourage that to be a Ward 1 one, then Ward 3 has no representative on the board. Again, uh, that's, that's the choice of this council. Yeah. On the motion. Gibson. Yielding? I pass. Dobbins? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Barry? Pass. Vestal? No. Height? No. And Witcher? No. That is three, four, two pass, and three no. Motion files. Mayor, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yielding and I will work with the gentleman from Ward 3 to have a diversity person fill that spot, uh, hopefully by the next council meeting, either from Ward 1 or Ward 2. Question, sir. Do we have two vacancies on the Civil Service Commission? Correct. Okay. And I would hopefully that we could cure that problem between now and... <laughs> That's <not trying> to <laughs> that we can cure that problem between now. We, we've talked to two different people, but we weren't aware that this position was up. We were aware Mr. Bess's was going to come up. Mary, if I may. Um, I would more than welcome uh, Alderman Dobbins to uh, participate in the discussion as well. Uh, you know, just in the interest of fairness. Well, not a problem at all. We're finished with the legislation. Uh, the uh, public comment section is open. Name and yes, sir, my name is Keith Robinson. I work for the Public Works Department. I was just curious if there's been any progress on the job study, salary survey. Uh, no. Uh, actually, there, there hadn't. Uh, we're waiting on a uh, lawsuit to try to determine what uh, opportunities we have with regard to uh, salary. And that uh, lawsuit is not in the Do you have any idea when it might be? Uh, we asked that question this morning. Our city attorney said no. Uh, any day, it could be any day now. It could be tomorrow. It could be the next day. We hope uh, in the very near future. Good evening, gentlemen. My name is James Ard. And I realize that there's not much we can do about the housing problem on Camp Robinson. But I'd like to state that I just moved my mother recently out of an unsafe neighborhood and uh, Alderman Gibson knows where that was so he knows how unsafe it was and I don't want to have to go through all this again it's and I realize part of this is a done deal but I asked about 10 people to write letters it's like going out selling a phone system out of 10 you get two and then you have people that can left and right about what goes on in the council meetings, but they don't want to show an interest. Myself is one of them from years past. I do appreciate the, what Mr. Gibson has done, and I appreciate what y'all are trying to do to get us in at the table. I do feel that the people on the quorum courts, like Charlie Robinson, has a rotten attitude because he, when I tried to talk to him about it, he wanted to laugh about it. It's my understanding he sent an email back to one of our council members that just said, you sent it the wrong address. I don't think attitudes like this should be among the people that out there trying to help in the city and the city government. And I hope the people will vote in that direction. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Do I have a motion? So moved. A second. On the motion to adjourn. Gibson? Yes. Yielding? Yes. Dobbins? 